Have I ghosted on someone? Yes. I have tried to ghost on someone. I've definitely been in situations where we've both ghosted at the same time. I've never been ghosted. I do the ghosting. I ghost on people because I don't have the heart to tell them I find them repulsive. Online dating and social media have completely changed the way we meet and date new people. But it's also changed the way we stop seeing those people. The easiest way to get rid of that Tinder date? Ghosting. Ghosting is the technique of simply disappearing from a relationship, usually digitally, by text or online without explanation. Of course, blowing someone off didn't start with online dating, but in a world ruled by apps, it's easier than ever to hide behind a screen. You don't have to sit across from that person and break up with them and listen to them cry and do the whole breakup thing when instead you can just simply disappear. In fact, if you're watching this, you've probably been ditched via unreturned text. 78% of millennials have been ghosted on at least once. And at least 11% of you are guilty of pretending to be dead or really, really busy in order to get out of a relationship. People can ghost at any point in the relationship, but it's most common early on before you've ever talked about where the relationship is going. What's interesting about a new relationship or an early relationship is that there can be a very broad range of attachments. But after a string of text messages or one or two dates, one person may feel more or less fully invested and another person may be thinking, I have no major intentions here. One of the things that dating apps do is that you see these pools and the pools seem huge and endless and we always wonder, well, maybe there's something better out there. Our negative reaction to ghosting can be explained by attachment theory, which explores the dynamics of interpersonal relationships. The basis of attachment is trust and security. If a person makes us feel safe, we tend to let down our guard to form a relationship. When the relationship is abruptly ended, it leaves us vulnerable and filled with self-doubt. A relationship that was pretty insignificant can take weeks to get over, not because the relationship itself was so fantastic and not even because the other person was very appealing, but just because people can't tolerate being left without explanation. The way you win an argument now is by forcing the other person to have the last word because that's a display of desire. And if you walk away, it's, it's sort of like saying, you're not even worthy of my time. A 2012 study in the Journal of Research and Personality claims that there are seven ways to end a relationship. One of these includes avoiding the withdrawing from contact with a partner. People who are more mature become accustomed to having to deal with awkward interpersonal situations. It doesn't just happen in relationships. You have to tolerate moments like that on the job and socially. Those things are sort of developmental milestones. Ghosting has neither the benefit of quick resolution nor the bonus of less intense pain. Considering there's a spectrum of ways to break up, ghosting is definitely the most talked about. But it's also emblematic of the way we communicate in a digital age, quickly and with little commitment. Is ghosting a new ill created by the dating app era? Or just a new way to describe an old phenomenon? Either way is definitely here to stay. It's never going to vanish in the thin air like one of those, you know, 